welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that looks to answer exactly those. I'm Rebecca Felgate, and I can't pretend that I have never secretly longed to be the doctor's next companion, traveling through time and space, experiencing different eras and planets with the doctor. The only problem is, Doctor Who isn't real. A man who travels through time at the swirl of a TARDIS, a wild scenario only dreamt up by the best scriptwriters. Or is it? Of course, let's state the obvious and say that we are already traveling in time. Time is fluid, it does not stand still. For you to stand still is still for you to travel in time. The seconds will tick, the hours will go by, time will move forward around you. Obviously, what the question is inferring is, is it possible for a person to move forward or backward in time faster than the ticking of a clock. This is where things get a touch more complicated. We can time travel, but it isn't as romantic in real life as in the movies, or indeed Doctor Who. As Einstein's theory of special relativity says, the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers, and that the speed of light in a vacuum was independent of the motion of all observers. To put it simply, if you're able to travel something approaching the speed of light or faster, you will be able to travel forwards in time. The closer something moves to the speed of light, the slower the time would move for that object, although if they had a watch on them, they would show the same Earth seconds. We have already experienced time travel on a minute scale. Space shuttles travel at such a speed that when they return to Earth, the astronauts are 0.001 second younger than they were had they been on the Earth. This is called time dilation. Similarly, satellites that orbit the Earth are traveling so fast that they experience a 7 microsecond delay every day. To put this into context, a space shuttle for example is traveling at around 7,500 miles per hour. The speed of light is 6.702 times 10 to the power of 8 miles per hour, or 186,000 miles per second. The chance of us reaching a suitable speed to actually travel a significant time into the future at the moment is slim, projecting ourselves at the speed speed of light would not be sustainable even if it was possible. Say you were traveling for 5 years, on your return, 50 earth years would have passed. This is once again because of time dilation. Time moves slower for you than it does on earth when you travel at such speeds. This is something that is quite interestingly explored in Interstellar. As far as what we know about the physics of the space-time continuum, traveling into the future is the only time travel possible, and that is only significantly measurable if we manage to break the light barrier. With all the information available to us at the moment, we cannot travel back in time. At this point, we can see the past having lived through it, but we cannot see the future. Conversely, however, some scientists believe that we could travel back in time if we were able to create a wormhole. The general theory of relativity and our current understanding of quantum gravity say that objects with an extremely high mass, like black holes, can warp time around them. If time can be bent, can it be folded back onto itself in what is known as a closed time-like curve, or CTC? If we could string together CTCs, we could create a wormhole, and if we could do that, then we would be able to travel forward and back in time. But to create a series of these CTCs, we would in theory need half of all of the energy and matter in the universe. Others speculate as to another side, so to speak, of a black hole. Some think traveling through a black hole will lead to an alternate reality, a different time to travel to. However, there is an issue here as to the point of the much debated singularity which suggests a black hole ends in one singular point. AKA, there's nothing to travel to, you'll simply be sucked in until you are one mere atom. Perhaps for one moment we can move into a less mathematical and scientific approach to things. If we do one day find a way to travel back in time, where is everybody from the future? If we could travel in time, would we even be able to interact with ourselves? There is another way that we could, in theory, travel in time, except for us, it doesn't actually involve travelling at all. It involves staying very, very still. What am I talking about? 
Cryogenic freezing, that's what. Many current day medics are somewhat skeptical about the future of cryogenics. In cryonics, bodies are frozen, usually by immersion in liquid nitrogen at minus 186 degrees Celsius. The hope is that, despite resurrection not being possible in the current day medicine, one day these bodies will be able to be fully restored to life. If so, the first ever frozen human, James Bedford, who was cryogenically frozen in 1967, could wake up over half a century later to a whole new world. In this instance, I believe that we could say he time travelled, in that he would have no sense of the time that had passed between his death and the 60 years that he wakes up in. Ok, so where does this leave us? We discovered the speed of light almost 400 years ago. Since then, we have only made a tiny dent in our time travel capabilities. We may not be able to travel significantly in time, but we can travel. So, in answer to our question, is time travel possible, we have to say yes. Can we use it at our convenience at the moment? Well, no. Do we know how to travel back in time at the moment? No. But if everything we have ever learned up until now means anything, we will know that we don't as of yet know all of the answers to the universe, nor have we been able to apply what we do know to our technological benefits. Yet. As NASA continues its investigations, and instruments such as the Large Hadron Collider exist to excel particles, I wouldn't write off the possibility just yet. Nor would I dismiss the very real possibility of successful chirogenics. Time travel is possible on a minuscule scale, and one day it may be available on a bigger, more measurable scale. When? We just don't know. Should we seize the opportunity to travel through time, even if it were available to us, if it meant never returning to our own time. At this point, it's not for us to say, but it may well make an excellent future episode of Life's Biggest Questions. Thank you guys for tuning in to find out whether or not time travel is possible. Obviously, this is an exceptionally complicated topic, so if you do have anything to add, or you just wish to continue the discussion, then please do so in the comment section down below. I'm Rebecca Felgate, this has been Life's Biggest Questions. If you like this video, then please do show us by giving this video a good thumbs up, sharing it with someone who will find it fantastically interesting, and of course, subscribe subscribing to Life's Biggest Questions. Recommend us to a friend and we'll keep on making videos. Until next time.